I always remember a day when me, my brother and my sister went back. Uh, we met up again at my parents' house and, and spent the day together. I would love to say it was a cold Christmassy day. It wasn't. It was actually on the 4th of May 2009. And the newspaper arrived and it had this puzzle in. It was an, uh, the Einstein riddle. So we, we saw that and thought, oh, this is interesting. And we opened it up and there was this riddle. And the, it's a really, really difficult one. And the answer to the, the question sorry, that's asked is, who owns the fish? And we spent a lot of that day trying to work out and pick through all the clues to work out who owned the fish. It took me ages to work out the answer, but I really, really enjoyed unpicking the puzzle. For this task, we're going to have a go at two similar kinds of questions. Uh, one involving Santa, Mrs Claus and two of their elves. So feel free to have a go at that one, although when we look at it in the video, we're going to kind of model how to break the questions down step by step. So you could either watch that along with the video, or it might be you have a go and look at that. And then we're going to get on to the main task, where you've got to work out the all-important question, whose present is who? Good luck. I hope you enjoy these tasks as much as I did when I was doing the Einstein Riddle. And so welcome to the challenge, who's present? Now, before we actually get to that question, we're going to start with this one. And it's unpicking a similar kind of logic puzzle. It'll be really helpful to start off with if you've actually got this in front of you and if you've read the information. We're going to go through it on the video. It might be you want to have a go at the, at the puzzle first and then we have a look at the video example, or it could be that we actually work through this one as a worked example together. So here it is. Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus spend Christmas Day with two of their elves, Miss Sugarplum Fairy and Mr. Alabaster Snowball. There are clues to show each person's favorite Christmas song, their favorite Christmas food, and what they like to do on Christmas Day. Here's those clues. The person who loves the song Jingle Bells is not an elf. Santa Claus is not the person whose favorite food is mince pies. The person whose favorite song is White Christmas loves Christmas pudding. Sugar Plum Mary's favorite Christmas food is turkey. One of the men loves playing board games on Christmas Day. The person who loves watching a film on Christmas Day is not the person whose favorite song is Frosty the Snowman. The elf who loves sprouts makes a snowman on Christmas Day. The person who loves the song 12 Days of Christmas always goes for a walk on Christmas Day. There, lots of information. But where on earth would we start? Now, hopefully you have a grid that looks a little bit like this one. The first thing I would do is this one. Sugar Plum Mary's favorite Christmas food is turkey. Now, I know that one for sure, so I can put that in straight away. Favorite food, Mary, turkey. Now, what could we do next? I've picked out three of the clues. Now, one of them we can put in place already. Pause the video, read those three clues, and have a think. Which clue can we position, and how do we know we can position that one? Okay, let's have a look. The person whose favorite song is White Christmas loves Christmas pudding. Well, there's a few places that could go still. It could be that that's Santa, Mrs. Claus, or Alabaster, with all those spaces there for song and for food. We know it can't be Mary though, because her favorite food is turkey. One of the men loves playing board games on Christmas day. Well, that could either be Alabaster, or it could be Santa Claus, we don't know yet. The elf who loves sprouts makes a snowman on Christmas day though, we can position, because there are two elves, Mary and Alabaster. And so it's only Alabaster Snowball who's left who, where we don't know the favorite food. So it must be Alabaster whose favorite food is sprouts and he must like making a snowman on Christmas day. So there we can position those two pieces of information as well. Now, just a moment ago, I said that the first two clues, we've not got enough information yet to position those two clues. But now, actually, one of those clues we can use. Pause the video and think about those top two clues. Which one can we now use? Okay, let's have a look. Well, actually, one of the men loves playing board games on Christmas Day. Um, and the two men that we have, Alabaster and Santa Claus, well, Alabaster likes making a snowman. So it must be Santa Claus that loves playing board games on Christmas Day. Now, I've selected another two clues for you to have a look at. 
Um, and again, I want you to think which, which one or which ones, how can we position these pieces of information now? What's the next step? Well, let's have a look. Santa Claus is not the person whose favorite food is mince pies. Um, so that only leaves one person. It's Mrs. Claus, it must be Mrs. Put Claus, he likes those mince pies. And then the person whose favorite song is White Christmas, loves Christmas pudding. Well, the only person who we, where we haven't identified their favorite food is Santa Claus. It must be Santa who loves Christmas pudding and his favorite Christmas song must be White Christmas. Now, I'm gonna show you these next three clues. Now, have a think now, which one or ones can you position next? See if you can work through these, these three clues. And when you're ready, let's have a look. The person who loves the song Jingle Bells is not an elf. Um, so actually the only person that's left that's not an elf is Mrs. Claus, because we know Santa's favorite song. So hers must be Jingle Bells. Um, the person who loves the song 12 Days of Christmas always goes for a walk on Christmas Day. Now, there's only one person left where we don't know both their favourite song and their favourite activity. There's only one person where we can position both of those things. And who is it? Well, of course, it is Mary, Sugar Plum Mary. It's her that loves the 12 Days of Christmas and to go for a walk on Christmas Day. Well, that leaves watching a film and the favourite song, Frosty the Snowman. Alabaster's favourite song must be Frosty the Snowman. And uh, watching a film, well, that's for Mrs Claus. That brings us to our task and the who's present task. It looks like this. Have a think about the order that you'll use the clues. Which clues do you know for certain? Um, I would always suggest crossing off the clues that you've used. So you've not got too much information to go through. It's a really challenging puzzle. Lots of different steps. See if you can explain the order that, we, that you can go through the clues. We will look at it together on the video, but enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. So let's have a look at how this question can be broken down into, into steps. Um, to help, I've color coded all the presents in red, um, in blue, all the wrapping paper, and the position where all the presents can be found in green. Um, now the order. And again, I'd love to know, is this the order that you complete the clues in or did you do them in a different order perhaps? Well, to start off with, I went for Fred uh, has, is the person who's got the wrapping. Okay, let's have a look at how this problem can be broken down. To help us to see it, I've color coded all the presents in red, in blue, the color of the wrapping paper, and then where you can find the presents all in green. Um, now, the first clue that I went for was I knew that Fred is the child whose present is wrapped in the stripy paper. So I put that one in there and I'm going to get rid of that clue. Now, there's also a clue that says um, that there's a child whose present is wrapped in ribbon and that's a boy. Um, so I know that's not Fred. And so the only boy left is Tom. So it must be Tom whose present is wrapped in ribbon. And that one is also under the bed. Um, we've got that position there. So again, I'm going to get rid of that clue. Um, now, there's another one about wrapping paper, which says that the gold wrapping is not one of the twins. Um, so if the gold wrapping is not one of the twins, uh, the only person that's not one of the twins left is Zara. Gold wrapping. Again, I'm going to get rid of that clue. Um, now, the next one I went for was the spotty wrapping paper um, on, the, on the sofa. because Actually, the only wrapping paper that's left is the spotty wrapping paper one. So that must be Amy's present. Where is it? It's on the sofa. Now, I came now to our new bottom right clue. Um, the skateboard for the twin is under the tree. Um, so if one of the pres twins' presents is under the tree, well, it's not Amy, hers is on the sofa. That has got to be Fred's, Fred's skateboard. Um, now, next I went for, well, we knew that one of the boys gets a camera. That's not Fred, it must be Tom. So I can get rid of that clue as well. Um, and there's only one place that's left and that is the kitchen. So it must be Zara whose presence in the kitchen. Now that's not Lego Zara's present. So her, it must be Amy whose present is Lego. So I can position those two, get rid of that clue. 
And what does that leave us with? Well, it leaves us with Zara, who must have got the basketball. Now, I really love completing logic puzzles, but something I also really like is actually making them. You really have to think hard when you design your own puzzle. So I wonder if you want another challenge, if you could have a go at creating your own logic puzzle in the kind of style that we've looked at already. So there's a little prompt here that might give you some ideas. It's around the reindeer and this grid might help, help you to fill it in as well. So I would suggest if you design your own puzzle, make sure you know what the answers are and then obviously hide them, test your puzzle out on someone else. Good luck with that and Merry Christmas.